Pepper, Clay, and Chris, they're on your left. Andrew, Dan, and Frank, they are on your right. We're going to be underway here in round number four in one moment. We do want to thank everybody for joining us here this weekend. SCG Baltimore, we're in Charm City. Hashtag SCGBALT at SCG Tour all weekend long. And so we're going to make our way through a bunch of rounds. Current champion here in event. And uh, Dr. A Luck wants to know if LeBron played Magic, what standard, modern, and legacy decks would he play? Wouldn't matter because he'd win with whatever he played with. <laughs> Come on. What? What decks? I don't know. He's the best player, so he just played the best deck in every format, sure. right? So, Teamer Energy. Yep. Grixis Death Shadow. Okay. Grixis Delver, or whatever the best Delver deck is. Yeah. Yeah. Or what he could do, like he's done his entire career, is play with like a garbage deck and win anyway, because he just plays with a lot of garbage teammates and makes them good. I Case think his teammates have been good recently. Case in point, the Cavs this season, utter garbage. Winning record. We have a Deathrite Shaman. It's a Deathrite Shaman mirror of sorts. I don't think any of those decks you listed slam dunk on people. Well, what do we call a slam dunk from a deck? I don't know, a combo kill or just like some ridiculous top end. So just storm in all three formats or whatever? Maybe. Yeah. Just something like over the top. Just slam dunking people. Like he would definitely play the decks that were meant to be banned. Sure. For sure. You know, like decks that just should not be allowed. Delver Secrets here for Spencer off of an underground sea that was searched for via a misty rainforest. Andrew's going to untap. Let's draw a card. He's got Death Right, a couple lands in the graveyard to work with. You, of course, know that Elves can go off as soon as turn two, depending on what the draw looks like. Oh, I've been on the receiving end of that. Hey, so have I. It's <laughs> not great. Here's a Quirin Ranger. This is Misty Rainforest. This is a Death Right Shaman activating for mana. Hello, second Death Right Shaman. And pass the turn back over to Spencer, who does have Force of Will, and it looks like a blue card in hand, so he's somewhat ready for natural order. He'll take a look with Delver. It's a whiff. Looks like he may have picked up a copy of Wasteland. To note, Andrew Jessup did search for a basic forest with his Misty Rainforest. He knows that, obviously, he could be playing a deck against a deck that does have Wasteland. So instead of searching for, let's say, a Bayou, searching for a basic forest, he can search for that dual land a little bit later if he'd like. Yeah, there's really no need at this point in the game to expose yourself to anything like that. See Spencer resolving this brainstorm here. He has to be, uh, you know, a little cognizant. He obviously wants his Delver to flip, but he might also want to shuffle away a bunch of these cards. If he only has fetch lands to cast a spell this turn, he's not going to be able to guarantee the flip of the Delver and use that fetch land this turn. Spencer not sure if he wants to put those two cards on top, so he'll take a look again. Now he'll set them. He is happy enough, it appears. You see the force of will in his hand. That part is easy. No, is that a pass? Yikes. He might be brainstorm locked. Okay. It's not a spot he wants to be in here. No. No, it's not. I thought he might have a wasteland in his hand, but it looks like he's just on all spells. So Andrew's going to sacrifice... That Mystery Forest, he's going to get his good old pal Dryad Arbor. 1-1 one, one Forest Wait, that can you, attack. You can't search for creatures with you, fetch lands. You can. You can. Believe it or not, you can. Legacy is so fun. It's great. Yeah. It's just like everything in life. Good in small doses. Sure. You know, don't overdo it. But we, we enjoy it. As we'll go over to Andrew, he'll draw a card. Two. Let's use a Dryad. Bring that forest back. Untap that Dryad Arbor. Play that land. Use Deathrite Shaman. Natural order time? Yes, sir. Better have Force of Will. This is an attempt to get Creator of Behemoth and more or less attack for lethal. So it's on Spencer to have Force of Will, which we know he does. He will use Force of Will, removing a Taxing Probe. So he has stopped that threat. See if Andrew has anything else he wants to do this turn. He does have a copy of Green Sun Zenith in hand. Looks like he might have some more one mana elves too. It looked like a second natural order, but it's hard to tell when he just shovels his hand constantly. <laughs> well, he does have a second natural order, but I think we'll be saving that for next turn. Sure. Well, of course. For now, it's going to be a Queer and Ranger, and attacking with confidence with Queer and Ranger and Death Right Shaman. <laughs> Gets on. Absolutely. Lightning Bolt is the top card. Delver Secrets will transform into Insectile Aberration. 
the draw there for Spencer is Lightning Bolt, of course. He does not have a second land. We know that, or he would have played one last turn. Uh, this is so awkward for him. Even doesn't, doesn't even have red mana. And he knows the next card on top of his deck, of course, because of that Brainstorm. You do see the teammates there, Spencer and Clay Spicklemeyer and Chris Anderson. Spicklemeyer in the middle, Anderson on the left. Here is Cabal Therapy. Name that card, Spencer. Name that card. What do we got? Would you name Natural Order here? Okay, well, Spencer did. Sure. But uh, <laughs> he, he, I mean, he nailed it. Yeah. Uh, there's some argument for the, the Green Sun Zenith there. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, m most of the one cost elves are already going to be out of his hand. Because he's already deployed the elves, it's very unlikely that he has a glimpse either. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so here's Wasteland. All right, so he's going to pick that up. Wasteland's going to target Dryad Arbor. Queen Ranger's going to allow Andrew to pick that up. So now he'll untap. And we're going to head back Andrew's way now. He'll draw a card. You see Andrew's brother, Danny. He's in the middle playing Grixis Death Shadow, as he oftentimes is when he plays Modern. Looks like he might be sideboarding here for game number two. So if we have an update on that match, we'll let you know between Spicklemeyer and Jessa. Yeah, Danny's had a lot of success with that deck. Yes, he has. He's the best deck kind of guy. Yeah, after one of the events that he had top aided, he was talking to you and I, and he was like, hey, like, why would I ever stop? I'm going to keep playing this deck until they take it away from me. Pretty much. That's what he kind of does across all formats. He, he just always plays what is to be the perceived best deck. And Danny is currently up a game over Clay. No. What? He must have gotten lucky. Yeah. See, life total is here between Spencer and Andrew. Looks like Deathrite Shaman's going to activate. We're going to return, untap, play. And that's Green Sun Zenith. I believe the Zenith is going to be for two. And so that's going to go back. Might be time for an Elvish Visionary. Yeah, if that was two, then we're going to get the Elvish Visionary uh -huh. going and just start churning our way through this deck. You know, with Spencer just stuck on one land, this gives Andrew Jessup so much time to just really just accumulate tons of card advantage here. So an interesting question here, Craig. Let's take a look at Green Sun Zenith, if we could. An interesting question on Twitter. I want to thank everybody for chiming in on the conversation. We take a look at Green Sun Zenith. Search your library for a green creature card with converter mana cost X or less. Put it in your battlefield. Put it on the battlefield and shuffle your library. Shuffle Green Sun Zenith into its owner's library. So is that two shuffles or one? <laughs> I, I, I bet it's been a, uh, I bet there's an actual errata on the card. Well, you know, we would have to check. So how do we want to count that for the, um, for the, I don't know, just pulling this out at random. Maybe this is on my bingo board or not. Player shuffles three times in one turn. It's just one shuffle. Okay. Okay. I hate to be the bearer of bad news. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. He'll do anything to win. Got it. Got it. Oh, I haven't even begun to fight yet. <laughs> Cabal Therapy here for Spencer. Visionary Dried Arbor. That's the hand for Andrew. Not sure exactly what Spencer named, but it was a miss. <laughs> it wasn't either of those cards. Yes. That we know. You saw Andrew load up the board a little bit there with Elvish Visionary Nettle Sentinel. Now he's going to be untapping. He'll be drawing. He named a Green Sun Zenith at Spencer with that Cabal Therapy. The, sure. The, uh, the whiff. And at this point, I, I, this is one of those 99% games for Andrew Jessup. He's in a pretty good spot. Yeah. It, it's, you know, a lot of people just play out the games till they lost, and mm -hmm. there's a lot to be said for that. But it, it, if Spencer were to pick up his cards here, no one would tell him he's doing the wrong thing. No, no. You know, maybe Spencer's got something good hiding in his hand. Maybe he needs a second land for something relevant. Um, don't know. Obviously, he's playing the game out. He's got to remember who he's playing against. Andrew has had a lot of success here on the SD Tour, and a lot of it with elves. So the chances that Andrew makes some sort of error, pretty low, to be honest. But one of the things we do know about Andrew, he will take his time. Yes. Make sure he does not make a mistake when he's got a game well in hand like this. Now, I, is that an attack with five creatures? Why is your voice so high? Is, is that an attack with five creatures? I don't know, Cedric. Is, uh, is that... That, that looks like it might be an attack of five creatures. Why don't you get to work on that bingo board okay. there? Get it. Get that. Bang. Five or more creatures attack at once. Oh, oh darn. Oh, crud. 
here's Elvish Visionary. Gonna untap Nettle Sentinel. You know what that is? That is good sequencing. That's what that is. Attack first, then untap your creature. That needs a green spell to untap. <laughs> That's what that is right there. We're gonna head back over to Spencer, who has a land and one creature. Not much going on on the left side of the table. Good sequencing. Not to be confused with, I'm not gonna say that. Yeah, no, gonna say that. you're right there. I'm not gonna say that. You're just right there. Uh, for Spencer, a little behind in all areas right now. And I do think he actually has like another copy of Wasteland in his hand. He's finally been given a target, but he hasn't found you know a red source of mana for his lightning bolt or really anything of consequence right yeah, now, Greg. Yeah. Yeah, this is one of those situations where sure you can play another turn, but does it really matter? Uh oh, Ari Lax has chimed in. Pro Tour Concertar here champion disagrees with your shuffle ruling, Craig. On Green Sun Zenith, he is not particularly fond. So he's saying that when he resolves the Green Sun Zenith, he shuffles his library with the Zenith still there and then shuffles the Green Sun Zenith into the deck. Oh boy, oh boy. That's what he's saying? Uh, Andrew Jessup does win game number one here over Spencer. Uh, we're gonna get to the sideboards in a minute, but now we've also had judges chime in. According okay. to the rulings for Green Sun Zenith, effects that care about shuffling will see two shuffles, even if players sh shortcuts and shuffles only once. That's, look, you're a winner here. Uh, another judge, level two judge here, Green Sun Zenith is definitely two shuffles. Sorry, Craig. Yeah, I'm sorry too, but <laughs> I can live with this. Okay, all right. Them's, uh, them's the rules. Andrew J does win game the run here over Spencer G. As uh, you see, the team of Jessup, Jessup, and, and Frank Scarron, uh, they are uh, off to a nice start here as the Jessup brothers have held up their end of the bargain. We'll see if Frank can keep it going on his side. But we're going to take a look at the sideboards here, and we'll start with Spencer since he'll be on the play. Uh, three Surgical Extraction, three Pyroblast, two Umzawa's GTA, two Diabolic Edict, an Ancient Grudge of Spell Pierce, a Fluster Torm of Cabal Therapy, and a really good one in this matchup, if he can get it out there, Liliana, the Last Hope. Liliana is pretty good in this matchup. Uh, the, the real payoff cards here are the Umizawa's GDs. Yes. He wants to get those into play, get some counters on them, and the game will just be over real fast. Um, depending on how bad he thinks some of his main deck cards are, he might want to bring in a little bit, uh, like the Diabolic Edicts. They're not very good in this matchup, but they might still just be better than some of the other cards he's working with. Uh, cards like Cabal Therapy are not great against the Elves deck. Yeah, you know, they're, they're good on turn one, and then they get real bad after that. Let's take a look at Andrew, who's got three thoughts, three surgical attraction, three abrupt decay, two cabal therapy, two shaper sanctuary. That's a new one. A scavenging ooze and a reclamation sage. How are we feeling about these options? What is shaper sanctuary? So that's single green. Uh, it's oh, an enchantment. When you're targeted. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. New card. Yeah, new card. Okay, new card. okay, okay. Man. Could be good in this matchup. Potentially. Uh, yeah, I can see these thoughts. He's just coming in, uh, just clearing the way for him to resolve some of his cards. I see the scavenging ooze being fine. But really, uh, I think Jessup's pretty well set up in this type of matchup to, to deal with his opponent with what's in his main deck. I think he's actually pretty comfortable in the matchup, too. You have to imagine that Andrew has played this matchup plenty. Oh, yeah. Uh, given his legacy experience, and he actually made that particular game look pretty easy. Nothing crazy going on with Natural Order or Glimpse. Just attacking, building an advantage. Obviously, Spencer did have some mana issues, so we'll see if Spencer can draw more than one colored source of mana this go around. Uh, StarCityGames.com newsletter is what we're going to talk about as Chris Anderson did win game number one of his match over Frank Scarron. It's your source for Magic the Gathering news. It's got highlights of some of our best articles, upcoming SCG tour dates and locations. We've got SCG IQs and game nights near you. we also got the exclusive Cardboard Crack comic. Unfortunately, it is really expensive to sign up for. Sure, yeah. So that's kind of the hurdle that yeah, most that people have. Barrier to entry. There. Yeah, because it's really expensive and that it's free. It costs you one email address. Yes. Yeah, so go to starcitygamescom slash newsletter for more information. Sign up today. You sit on the internet all day anyway. You might as well get some awesome Magic the Gathering news while you're there. As we get ready here for game number two between Andrew Jessup and Spencer Garnier. Andrew Jessup is a very good Magic player. He's a young one, too, from the New York area. 21 years old is the member of Team Metagame Gurus.com with 10 open top eights, two Ws. His brother Danny also plays Magic, but Andrew is the self-proclaimed best player in the house. I'm sure that doesn't lead to any tension. No. Probably totally fine. Played basketball as a competitive outlet until injury turned into Magic. He's a big hip-hop fan and a pretty good drummer, too. Also really darn good at playing Elves in Legacy and Death Shadow in Modern is Andrew Jessup. He's going to be one of the good ones, man. Like three years from now, when he's cleaning up more SG Tour events and probably top 16 or top 18 Pro Tours, 
Get yeah, yeah. He's knocking on the door right now. I just hope he remembers, you know, the little people along the way, like us in the booth commentating on the Sure, yeah. Just don't we, forget about us. We we sacrifice so much for him. That's right. I'm glad you get it. And all we want is a Chipotle dinner with a delicious milkshake to boot. You read my mind. Yeah. Yes. You know what? I got. I'm gonna draw a line in the sand here, though. No queso. No. Their queso isn't good. It didn't do much for me. It's not good. I tried it once, and I was like, how much did I just pay for this? It hurts. It hurts. You were so excited for I, the queso. I recorded a video You were talking the about queso. the downfall of every other burrito chain ever. I was. I had a lot of confidence in Chipotle to knock everyone out of business, and then they made really bad queso. And so now that's not going to happen. And the fact that they poisoned a whole bunch that's of people. That's not good either. Might have not helped them. That's probably not great. Pon that, that was a while ago, but... Well, I guess it doesn't matter then. I just feel like that was a bigger detriment to their success than their mediocre queso. Yeah. Yeah. It's tough. But I'm still eating there. I'm still going to eat there. They're yeah. still going to get my business. But they will not get my queso business. No one will get my queso business. The Nettle Sentinel, I believe, for uh, – actually, I think it's a Shaper Sanctuary. You got a little glare there. I was being figure out what that card is. Apologies for the glare at home. It is Shaper Sanctuary. Uh, whenever a creature you control becomes a target of a spell or ability opponent controls, you may draw a card. Yeah. So you want to lightning bolt my thing? Big mistake. Powerful effect. Yes. Very good thing to start with. Uh, Jessup has two of these in his sideboard, so he's one. He's drawn one of his two sideboard copies. We're heading back over to Spencer. He's got a Grimlav Mancer. Very, very nice. Now, okay, I'm going to take a look at Shaper Sanctuary again because I want to see spell or ability. Or ability, yeah. Important to note. So Grimlav Mancer, that'll make it work too. This is an Elvish Visionary. You want to talk about drawing cards? There's one. Could have another one coming soon. <laughs> Polluted Delta is what Spencer will sacrifice in the turn. He'll get himself an underground sea. You're great. I know you're a Storm Guy in Legacy. Do you like these? Like, do you ever play these Delver strategies? Would you ever? Uh, I've had, yes, I have just a tiny bit. Okay. But in general, no. They're not flashy enough. You need some substance when you're, no, when you're beating uh, people? Yeah. Okay. You know, hey, hey, you be you. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not here to stop you. You know, I'm not one to gloat or really get carried away. Neither am I. But you know, some decks lend themselves to being able to do that if you were to want to do that more than mm, other decks. Okay. And just kind of slowly crossing the finish line with like a three-two. Not your thing. Yeah. All right, it's, I'm it's, picking it up. It's not the LeBron James slam dunk in the fourth quarter. What is? You know. What is? I'm picking up what you're putting down. What is turning on, winning on turn one is? With Storm. Yeah. yeah. The full victory lap. Yeah. I got you. Another underground sea. What do we have here? Might be True Name? Yeah. All right, True Name Nemesis. Choose Andrew Jessup, pass that turn back. So this is kind of the one-two punch right now for Spencer's deck. Like, he's got True Name on the battlefield. If he can find Umazawa Jite, he is in... Tremendous shape. Well, you say that uh, against the, the Shaper Sanctuary. Not as good, it's I guess. Not as good? Yeah. I mean, it's possible that Spencer's hoping he can just use those pump effects to cross the finish line as fast as possible. Okay. On this true name nemesis. And hey, maybe I have one or two forcibles or something somewhere in there. Uh, maybe a Cabal Therapy to break up a key card in your hand. And hopefully I can just cross the finish line that way. It looks like a second Sanctuary came down along with a Wirewood Symbiote. Now he's, he is really disincentivized from getting rid of the opponent's creatures. In a weird way, Grimloff Master actually kind of looks bad now. Sure. Uh, which I didn't think I would say. But that's kind of where we're at in this game. Well, he can just start burning the opponent. True. Very true. That's certainly an option. Yeah, with the second one on the board, I, you know, I think Spencer's plan has got to just be get this Jitty on, you know, my true name nemesis, and I'm just focused on killing you. Your life total is priority number one. Well, there's the equipment. He'll pay the equip costs. We have seen this before. I think about the first time true name nemesis was around back at SCG Dallas a couple of years ago. Ty Thomason made this look very easy. Put a GTA on a true name nemesis or a batter skull, attack you. You will die eventually. <laughs> I promise you will die eventually. He was doing it with Stoneforge Mystic, but he really put true name nemesis on the map as being a real card in Legacy. Again, that was a handful of years ago. 
but it continues to do very well today. So it looks like we're going to have Elvish Visionary potentially jump in front of Grim Lavamancer. Obviously, can't get in front of True Name. So it looks like we will maybe have a trade. And now we will. Two counters on Jite. Pass the turn back. And I think you might be right, Craig. I think we might just see the old uh, maybe attack for seven, attack for seven plan, something like that. Yeah, and I'm surprised the Grim Lavamancer attacked there because it. It helps close out this game one turn sooner. Okay. Okay. You know, if, if the opponent's at 16, you want him at 14 if you can attack for seven twice, yeah, right? Yeah, sure, sure. And the Grim Lava Mantra conveniently deals two damage. It's interesting because I could, s in a weird way, see an argument for I kind of want to attack with that just to trade and lower your number of creatures because of Cradle, Sure. I guess, but... I think that what you are saying, being able to deal damage, make it in increments that cuts a turn, is probably more important. It's pretty important. And, you know, you're always going to be trading with the visionary there, right? The symbiote is just way too important, way too powerful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's possible that he expected his opponent to, to bounce the elf instead of trading. Sure. And he's just like, ah, oh, like I kind of win in this situation because he's got one less creature on the board. But it, in this situation, the, the, the Elvis Visionary doesn't have a whole lot of value because the terms are already defined on the board. Mm -hmm. You know, this game is going to end in two or three turns. I'm not going to spend that time drawing two extra cards with an El Elvis Visionary over that time. Spencer had a quick question for a judge, so we might see a time extension here in just a moment. But it looks like this has been resolved. See the players still playing. Andrew Jessup, Danny Jessup, they're up a game in each of their matchups. Chris Anderson up a game with Teamer Energy over Frank Scarron playing mono black aggro. Spencer will simply pass the turn back. We're going to go over to Andrew, who's in some real trouble here, as he'll draw a card. Picked up a copy of Deathrite Shaman, has a Pendle Haven in hand. And it's got to work through some things. Visionary's going to come down. That'll draw a card. Yeah, I think Jessup's actually close to, to where he needs to be. He has a cradle, uh, Crater Hoof Behemoth in his hand. Okay. So, you know, a few more creatures on the board. He can afford to take one or two more shots from this other creature. Probably only wants to take one. If he takes a second shot, he, he's being threatened by Lightning Bolt. Yeah, this is interesting, too, because, you know, will Spencer attack for seven or will Spencer attack for three and have four counters on GT? Sure. I, it, you know? Yeah, saving the GT counters is kind of an insurance policy. He can use them on the next turn. It mm -hmm. doesn't really matter. The only reason that he wouldn't want to do something like that is for the potential for abrupt decay, taking out the Jitty. Yep. Ooh, Cradle. Yeah, so with, with all of this man and all of these creatures, the Crater Hoof Behemoth is... We're starting to get somewhere here. It's real, yeah. Heritage Druid's going to come down. That Cradle tap for one, two, three, four mana because of Dryad Arbor. So there should be three green mana left floating. And now Spencer might want to make a move. So. What kind of is happening here, because the two copies of Shaper Sanctuary, Spencer doesn't want to kill anything, yep. but he does want to kill something. Yeah, and, and I think he doesn't want to kill anything. Mm -hmm. Like, this is just super awkward for him. He's in a, just a real bad spot. Everything doesn't work here. Yep. But, like, you know, your opponent drawing cards from Visionary at least uses up their mana and takes some time, and, and picking it off with the Jitty and letting him draw two cards like leaves him all the mana floating around. Yeah. I think that Spencer is right in doing nothing at this moment. Feels correct. So this will be three more green mana. So we're going to go up to six. Going to use this. Pick this up. Untap death right. OK. Let's go down to four draw another land and Jessup with with the death ray shaman he can actually get himself out of that bolt range where, where lightning bolt shaves an extra turn off of this clock if the death ray shaman is not summoning sick which i think it is correct but um, even even next turn mm -hmm. you know he, he will be able to make that play so Jessup did a little bit of stuff there but nothing too crazy he's got crater hoof in hand and he's hoping he gets the opportunity to use it next turn as we go back over to spencer garnier
Spencer with a lot of cards in hand. His turns have been pretty simple, honestly. Did a little bit of cantripping in the beginning, played a Grim Lava Mancer, played a Tree Nemesis, played and was always GT and equipped it. That's it. But that's been good to start. Looks like he might be using that Tropical Island for something here. He'll just pay two life and use Gitaxian Probe. Two Windswept Teeth and the Crater of Behemoth, which he was probably assuming was there. Sure. I think that's a hand there for Andrew, so. Spencer will write those down or make a mental note of them. He'll draw a card from Probe. Force a will to draw a pretty nice one. Yeah, that, that was a critical card. Spencer trying to figure out how he wants to use the charge counters. On Jita, as we have a quick update here, that uh, the old modern match there between Danny Jessup and Clay Spickle are getting ready for game number three. A little Death Shadow Mirror for Clay. He's got five colors. For Danny, he's just got three. But they'll play a third game here in just a moment. Yeah, th those games can be a slugfest. They can be. Looks like Spencer deciding to use the counters right away. Going to get in there for seven. Bring Andrew down to nine. There's a land, pass the turn back. We could have a hard cast force of will. Huh? Hey, hey, hey. Huh? Hey, hey. And I really wish that Grim Lava Mancer was still on the, the battlefield. It'd be pretty nice on the battlefield right now. Just, just, you know. Yeah, you know, he would need two activations instead of one to, to keep up with the death rate shaman. Mm -hmm. But it would still be there, it would be available to him. Andrew's going to pick up Elvish Visionary on the end step via the Wirewood Symbiote. So now he will untap all of his permanents. Those two Shaper Sanctuaries not doing enough for him thus far this game as he will draw a card. Picked up a Nettle Sentinel. Mana is not the bottleneck, my friends. That's the easy part. Metal Sentinel will come down. Obviously great in combination with Heritage Druid. That's why it's lined up there. The follow-up is Elvish Visionary. Trigger, draw a card, yes. Some very fair cards on the battlefield right now. Super fair. <laughs> Guy's Cradle can tap for six right now and he just has no interest in using it yet. Yeah. Three green. It's never easy for Elves to beat Jite. He is trying right now as there's a virtual ranger. Untap Nettle Sentinel. Up to three. Um, two, four, five, six, seven. So up to nine. Let's make it ten actually. Yeah, ten. Play a land. All right, hoof, there it is. Untap Nettle Sentinel. Is this anything? There's two in the pool. Yep. You can't spell pierce my creature. That's true. <laughs> Spencer is going to sacrifice a land. Might be searching for land number five. What's five mana in blue encounter spell, Craig? Uh, does it create three clues? Does not. Okay. It's not desertion either. It's a hard cast force of will. Ring a ding ding. Ring a ding ding. That goes on Ced's bingo board. Team Cedric just got ink all over himself. <laughs> you literally just stamped just your own hand. Just stamped hands. my own hand. <laughs> just uh, big yeah. dumb animal, any folks? E even when you win, you lose. Yep. <laughs> Look at the story of my life. That's great. Well, uh, that's good. I don't even have to try over here. No, you, know? you don't. No. I am just an unwieldy idiot. <laughs> That's all I am. <laughs> Deathrite Shaman, maybe looking for a little mana? So how's that dexterity working out I for you there? I want to talk about that. Maybe can we work on that at the gym? Is that anything? <laughs> hey, uh. Wirewood. Going to be activated. Andrew might do a little bit of attacking here. You see he's got an Elvish Visionary in his hand, so he's going to play this again, draw another card. Looks like he's going to be out of mana floating. Untap the Nettle Sentinel. Draw a card. He's done a nice job of flooding the board. And now, oh yeah. Mm. In for one. 
Yes, sir. Kapow. Yes, sir. Asserting himself over the competition. To Spencer, we will go. Our cast force will look good there. Looks like he may have a Gurmag Ankler in hand. Yeah, he's got one of those in his deck. Here comes Trinity Nemesis, the card that actually matters, getting in for seven yet again. Trigger, two counters on Jite. Any big follow-ups here for our Grixis Delver players? Spicklemeyer and Jessup begin game number three, and Anderson Skarin still battling it out in game number two. Yeah, this Death Rite Shaman might just buy a whole nother turn here. He's at four right now. He can activate it twice. There's two creatures in his graveyard. It's true. Uh, you know, Jessup just has to be cognizant that he, he probably doesn't want to sacrifice his fetch land. That's a very good point, actually. Death Rite Shaman here for Spencer. And... Looks like he might have a moving of the equipment. Sure. Disincentivizes his opponent from attacking. He's actually going to go to Young Pyromancer, and now he'll move the equipment over to Young Pyromancer. Mm. That will hold the legendary equipment from Betrayers of Kamigawa. And it looks like Wire with Symbiote's going to return Elvish Visionary. You saw the two elves tap for a black or green man. Looks like it's a green mana via Birchlore Rangers. So now Jessup's going to remove a creature from his graveyard, go up to six. This is exactly what we talked about, where he can go from six to eight, and that might buy him an extra turn. Very, very important. Obviously, some tight play on the side of Andrew Jessup, who is on the hunt for something like a Crater of Behemoth or a Natural Order. He'll draw a card. Yeah, I think he could even Green Sun Zenith for a Crater of Behemoth at this point. Might be able to. And there is Wirewood, going to untap Nettle Sentinel. Draw. I think his Cradle should be untapped. I think so, too. Yeah? I think that just, yeah, just didn't get untapped in the untap set. Okay. Young Pyromancer, huh? <laughs> two mana, two one, no ability. Right where you want to be in Legacy. Yeah, right now. <laughs> <laughs> He'll return Elvish Visionary. There we go. Yeah, it has yeah. to be untapped. Yeah, it has that, to be untapped. That, that's yep. not an optional yeah. thing. Plus, you're, you're going to want that. <laughs> you're you're going to want that cradle. There we go. Return the visionary. Replay the visionary. Going to fall down to one green mana. Metal Sentinel on tap. Draw another card. He's on the hunt for Crater Hoof, Natural Order, or Green Sun Zenith. Let's move it up to four green. Metal Sentinel. Untap the other Metal Sentinel. Let's move it down to three green. All right, Birchlore Ranger makes it so that these cards are free. So these Nettle Sentinels untap their green spells. Cradle for a boatload of mana. Did he find another Crater of Behemoth? Oh, yes, he did. Yes, he did. Now, not all of these creatures can attack, but most of them can. And if Spencer starts using Umazawa's Jite to take care of some of these creatures. Obviously, Shaper Sanctuaries will work themselves into the equation. You can't see them, but there are two of the enchantment on the battlefield there for Andrew Jessup. So, I think he may have stolen one here, Craig. Yeah, I, I think this is going to be enough. There's so many creatures. This is going to be so much damage mm -hmm. here. We'll take a look at Crater of Behemoth. For those of you unaware, but you see Wirewoods are going to untap all their stuff, but the eight-mana beast... That is a mythic, giving all the creatures plus X plus X and trample in a turn, where X is the number of creatures you control. You can see on the battlefield, as Andrew Dressa was scooping out the permanents, he had quite a few of them. And he's going to win this match over Spencer Garnier. Two games to zero. Elves going to take care of Grixis Delver, which means the team of Jessup, Jessup, and Scarin are up a match here in round number four. We're going to be moving to modern here in just a moment to watch Clay Spickelmeyer and Danny Jessup. And if we have time to move over to Chris Anderson and Frank Scarin, we will do that. But congratulations to Andrew Jessup, who, again, demonstrating his skills with Elves and Legacy. He's been playing the deck forever, Craig. Yeah, re real sharp. He saw all the angles there and, you know, got a little lucky drawing the second uh, Crater Hoof Behemoth, but he, he was drawing so many cards each turn yeah. that he, it seemed like he was going to be able to get there.
We got a fatal push being played here by Clay. You see the light holes 9 to 11. They should be pretty low. They are Death Shadow decks after all. And it looks like a fatal push is going after Death Shadow. That's going to resolve. So Danny Jessup is going to lose his very powerful avatar. You think that was revolted? Yeah, yeah I can't tell. So yeah. I just I, I have no idea. There's no way to know. <laughs> no way to know. We couldn't ask. We can't rewind. No way to know. Over to Danny Jessup we go. <laughs> uh, here comes Tassiger. That's risky business. You attack with that thing, you bring Jessup, excuse me, you bring Specklemire down to five. More importantly, you make Death Shadow into an 8-8. Eight eight. A little scary. Yeah, he gets angry. Mm -hmm. But th this is a, a matchup that Danny Jessup is very familiar with. So we'll see if Clay has any interest in doing anything here. Wow, we're going to see a chump block. Well, he has that fetch line. He can grow to a six. He can go down to six. Thirteen minus six, seven, seven. Okay. Push. Yeah. You don't want to push yet. Hey, you want to make him pay the life. Yeah. Ah. Sort of. Yeah, unless you're terrified of, of a one blue instant. Stubborn denial. Yeah. Yeah. But a, a lot of that should be, you know, it, this game has obviously been played over several turns. Danny should have a pretty good idea at this point whether or not his opponent has that. Yeah, this is tough because if you wait and you let him get a watery grave and he has stubborn denial, your tasker dies. You know, you go... Clay goes out of six. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, that's a disaster. Yeah, that's a disaster. So I, I think if you're Danny, you actually have to just let this rip. Just, like, just this make is, the safest play. Yeah, this is this is kind of scary here. Hmm. Let's see what this is. Okay, it's Dismember. Oh. Okay. So if there's any fear of something like a Street Wraith, which there's not. Okay, so that's going to resolve. And now Spicklemeyer is going to search up a land. We'll see how low he's going to go. Yeah, it should be at eight currently. Yeah, from the fetch, let's keep him at eight. Going to get a Blood Crypt tapped. Remember, Clay really likes this five-color build, having access to all the colors of the rainbow. Black is kind of the base color. Green will give you Tarmogoyf. Red will give you Kozak's Return or various other things. Blue will give you Stubborn Isle. White will give you Lingering Souls. Yep. And, and the, the way he, he has built the deck and the way he plays it, it's generally just a four-color deck where he changes what that fourth color is depending on what the matchup is. Yeah. To Clay. So revisiting our Green Sun's Zenith conversation. Yes. Like I feel, I don't know, one, it's obviously very silly, but is, is Wizards going to make a card that just says like, shuffle your library like five times on it? There's no, no other text. All it says is shovel your library. It's like a two mana two two. I can only hope. And all yeah, just shovel your library. Yeah, I can only, I can legitimately only hope that happens. It would let me win this stupid contest. Well, so. it probably wouldn't make its way into this event mm. right now. I know some people. That's fair. Dial up Michael Majors. Yeah, I mean you've been talking about how you. What's that? aren't influencing the outcome I of our competition. I am definitely not. And then you just immediately contradict yourself. I am definitely not, and I don't appreciate that. Liliana the Last Hope has arrived. The elevator's gone up, which means that Tasker is a little bit smaller. Two-power creature now. We'll see Jessup sacrifice a fetch land here. Remember, Andrew Jessup, brother of Danny Jessup, also teammate this week, and he already won. So the team of Jessup, Jessup, and Scarin, they are up a match as Danny Jessup's going to fall down to 10. 10 to 8 of the life totals now. We will head back over to Danny. He'll draw a card. Thought Scour. Not the worst place to start. No, it's a little awkward when you have Tassiger and you just fill up your graveyard with a bunch of meaningless spells, but what are you going to do, not cast it? Yeah. 
doesn't have a reason to target Clay with it either, I don't think. He's going to get a basic island will Danny. Is that a, uh, is that a Guru Land? That looks like it's an Arabian Nights Mountain. Mm, oh. I think it's what that is. Okay, I can understand the confusion. So I guess we both get a stamp because it's a Guru Basic Land Arabian Nights Mountain. Do we both get a stamp? Done. Okay. I stamp my hand again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> here's, here's Thought Scour. He's going to target himself. Uh-oh. The Jessup brothers are arguing. Yes. <laughs> It looks like he targeted Tassiger with it. <laughs> yeah. Niall Spellbaum, Death Shadow going to go to the graveyard. He's like, yeah, I know I have Tassiger in yeah. play. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still targeting myself. Snapcaster Mage was the draw. That's, That's a good one. That is always a good one. Let's see if he wants to go towards a Liliana or Clay's life total. Man, I really want to kill you, but I really want to get this card off the board. Yeah, it does a decent enough job of clocking Liliana. It takes a little while, though. All right, he's going to knock Liliana down to two. And we're going to go over to Clay. Clay's going to sacrifice Blue to Delta. He's going to go down to at least seven. We'll see if he wants to go any lower than seven. Man, we watched a lot of this this year. What's that? Specifically, Death Shadow and players really trying to kill themselves as fast as possible while not trying to just lose the game because they killed themselves. Yeah, yeah. It's great. One of my favorite decks to watch. I don't know if it's my... I'm really starting to think it's really up there as far as favorite decks ever to watch. I'm not sure, but we go over to Clay. Clay will draw. Well, it's so unique, too. Yeah. The play patterns are all very unique and different. Clay will take a look through his graveyard here. Actually, Danny wants to take a look at the graveyard. Clay looks like he might have any Lingering Souls in his hand now. He's also got Liliana of the Veil. Oh, and this could turn out real bad for him. If, if he takes a Liliana line... Mm-hmm and tries to edict the opponent. Interesting. Oh, no, right, new rules. No, no, I, I didn't mean because of the legendary rule. Okay. He, he's running head on into a uh, Snapcaster Mage here that he doesn't know about. Well, yeah, yeah, it's true. Here's Snappy. This is probably just going to target an opt here. We're getting prompts about our bingo squares here. Two Planeswalkers, same name, has been on the bingo board before. It's not anymore. Thanks, Nick. Anything that goes wrong in this, I'm blaming Nick oh, for the record. Oh, it's, it's definitely Nick Miller's fault. I don't know who else's fault it could be. Is. Chris won his match 2-0, so we're all tied up here. One match to one. So it's on Clay versus Danny J. It's on Nick Miller's who it's on. <laughs> yeah. At the end of the day, there's only one person to blame. <laughs> as long as it's not me. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> Snapcaster Mage got sacrificed to Liliana the Veil's Edict Effect. Liliana, the last hope, has not been used just yet. And now Clay is chatting with the teammates. What are we going to do? Going to plus this one, target there. And it's an opt. Scry one. Top card is now the bottom card. Draw a card. Tassiger number two. Awkward. Not so much. Let's go over to Danny Jessup. He'll draw. Scalding Tarn Tasker, that's the hand. Neither of those are all that exciting. Tasker activation, fatal push, Gurmag Angler, and a big old graveyard for Clay Spickmeyer to decide from. And by Clay, I mean Clay Spencer and Chris. Of course. Marvel team up. What do we do? The three-headed ogre. Yes. What do we do? How do you feel about the new team communication rules? Where before you were on a team, you couldn't talk to them. Now, a lot of chit-chat. Uh, I think calling it a team and then not allowing the players to communicate is kind of a contradiction. Okay. You know? No, that makes sense. That makes sense. Some of, you know, some of the old school players like yourself, like me, you know, we played back during 
you know, booster drafting after events and, you know, team GPs and PTs where, like, you couldn't talk to your teammates. Yeah. And, you know, so you'd be ripping your hair out if they, like, made a mistake because you want to be able to step in and say something. Sure. Yeah, and yeah. now you can prevent that, which I think is better. I think overall it's just a better thing. It's a better sure. experience. Yeah. Yep. I would agree. Obviously, there was, uh, there was Team Limited then. Yep. And for our viewers that weren't around when that was a big thing, the amount of gesturing and hand motions and everything when you weren't allowed to talk. There was a lot. There was a lot. The, the Team Rochester drafts. Yep. Where you, you wanted to have secret, you know, symbols and gestures and, and stuff. Hand, handshakes. Yeah. Anything else, yeah. You know, you wanted to make sure your teammates understood what was going on, but you didn't want to tip your hand to the opponents. It was something. It was interesting, but... Lingering Souls and Tarmogoyf have joined the battlefield here for Clay. You see the light total 7 to 9 still in favor of Danny J, but it certainly doesn't feel like it because that Liliana on the last hope is still there going to work on Tassiker. Cars and Jessup's hand, not particularly good. And Tarmogoyf is a 6-7, which means it's outclassing Tassiker in a big way. As Jessup will draw a copy of Engineered Explosives. Ah, it's so fun, the, the, the redraws and the back and forth. I'm just like, yeah, Clay just had like a couple of good draw steps and he's just so firmly in the driver's seat and then Jesso peels this EE and, and it's just like, wait, like that could be so good if, he, if he's able to time it right. Yeah, I don't know how to use that right now. You know, you kind of want to wait to get the Clingering Souls, like all four. Yeah. Um, because Flyers are obviously an issue. You kind of want to kill Tarmogoyf because it's a 6-7. Yep. Uh, this is definitely a rock and a hard place here for Spitfelmeyer. Well, excuse me, for Jessup. Going after the Goyf, like, the, the Lily can just rebuy it if it wants to. It can rebuy the Death Shadow if it wants to. And, yeah, the looming threat of two more Spirit Tokens is a big problem. Super interesting. You know, J Jessup can try... You know, uh, attacking into that goif if he wants to. No, mm, I forgot his creature's smaller from the lily. Excuse yep. me. Yeah, I'm thinking he's going to make a tricky play where he delves away a card to shrink the goif. Yeah, he has to do something. It has to get really tricky. But, but he doesn't have a four power tasker to start. All right, squad up. Little bro and Frank trying to help Danny. This is EE for three. They've decided that Liliana is the one that. You know, they, they have to take care of here. All right. Now we'll go back over to Clay. They'll squat up. Spencer, Clay, and Chris going to sweat a draw step. Didn't get a great look at it. May have been a street wraith. Yeah, it looked like a spell. Mm -hmm. Tarmogoyf's going to come. Yeah, ba -ba. Maybe not. <laughs> We're going to leave one back. Yeah. Remember, Tarmogoyf right now, 6-7. You can see the Tarmogoyf on the screen. We're not going to leave one back. No? What are we doing? Tasker is, looks like it's going to be on chump blocking duty. Yeah, Jessup's saying, I don't want to just die to the tokens next turn. Mm -hmm. So I have to chump block now. All right, there's your block. <laughs> Street Wraith. That's why it's in the deck. <laughs> Hardcast Street Wraith on no one's bingo board this week, folks. Yep. Screwed again. Screwed again. Tasker for one mana. Can't block a Swamp Walker. <laughs> well, aside from a, a really good draw step out of Specklemeyer here, uh, Danny Jessup is going to get one more turn. The problem is, even with that extra turn, I, I don't know if there's anything that he can draw that's going to deal with both the, the, the flyers in the air and the 3-4 Swamp Walker. Mm -hmm. All right. We are going to go back over to Clay, who is very quickly playing an Inquisition of Kozak. He wants to see if the coast is clear. Thought sees and two... Scalding Tarns is the hand here for Danny Jessup, so that takes care of that. Everybody's going to come into the red zone. Clay is moving very quickly now because he knows he's in a great spot. Tasker's got to block Tarmogoyf. 
Street Wraith and two Spirit Tokens are going to come across. We'll get a Tasker activation, which means Danny will probably just get back a Thought Seize. Yep. So you can have that. <laughs> Down goes Tasker. We're going to recast Lingering Souls. Looks like no. Let's go to Jessup, and that is going to do it. Clay Spiegelmeyer is going to win this match here over Danny Jessup. Two games to one. That means the team of Garnier, Spicklemeyer, and Anderson win this match over Jessup, Jessup, and Scarin. Sounds like some law firms, if you ask it me. It does. It really does. Uh, the team of Garnier, Spicklemeyer, and Anderson, remember they did win SCG Louisville earlier.